My name's Kurt Stanton, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about this fellow, Mark Wayne, and how I met him. I was born and raised in Key West. After finishing high school, I entered the University of Florida, graduated with a mechanical engineering degree, and was hired by General Electric in Schenectady, New York. And I might add, first time I ever saw snow was the winter of 1940. Anyway, my job at GE, as it developed, was to go out and start up power plants. I was on quite a few battleships, destroyers. We made the propulsion equipment during the war years. And I guess my really most important job, back in April of 1945, I was sent down to Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I, I really didn't know what we, they were doing, and you didn't ask, because if you did, you got visited by the FBI. Anyway, when I went into the airline's terminal building in New York, the fellow looked at me and he says, you know, he says, uh, it's going to take a four-star general to bump you off this plane with this high, high priority you've got. And I was 28 years old. He said, and I said, well, he says, who are you? Then I began to feel important. Well, the thing that was important, of course, was the word Manhattan Project. And we all know the result of that. Well, following the war years, I moved up into commercial divisions and was director of sales training for General Electric and the big stuff, not toasters and washing machines. Anyway, in the course of this, I found out about an opening in Orlando as assistant manager of the power company. So I interviewed, I was awarded the job, and then moved up to general manager after the gentleman died who was ahead of me. And as Orlando grew and we kept up with it, we built a power plant over on the East Coast on the Indian River, about opposite Cocoa Beach. And as I came over here while that was under construction, it was necessary to go find a place to stay in the evening. It wasn't much on the mainland, so I went to Cocoa Beach. And I ended up staying at the Holiday Inn, that time managed by Henry Landworth. And that's where all the Mercury 7 astronauts were staying, so it, it was exciting. You'd go into the lounge, there was Alan Shepard, Gus Grissom, or whoever. But over in the corner of the lounge was a young fellow with curly hair, playing, playing an electronic piano. Well, he played the kind of music I liked, that I grew up with, that I danced to in days in New York City, the big band. I never planned to be an entertainer all my life because it wasn't an honorable profession in my family. You know, you know, I played all through school, you know, starting real young. Like, I had a band in the seventh grade. Rocky and I came up here uh, about a year ago and um, we were either going to see Bloody Midgets or we were going to go check out this lounge act. And uh, we decided on the lounge act. We came here, there was about two tables with uh, persons over the age of 70. This is about 10 o'clock at night, they left. And it was just Rocky and I and, and, and Mark and Lorna. And um, they basically said, you know, we could keep doing this gig, but there's nobody else here. What are you drinking? And we said whiskey. So they bought us a couple of whiskeys and we talked for the rest of the night. And uh, they were very, very cool people. So we started coming back. I mean, I remember from Vegas days when, when he used to do the lounge shows with the funny hats. See, that's, that's what Vegas doesn't have anymore, which was fun. Uh, you, know, you could go, uh, every lounge, every, every casino, I should say, had, had lounge shows. They'd do like 45 minutes and they would change every hour. I mean, you had, uh, well, like three and four groups working 24 hours a day. Well, not 24, but you know, whatever they did, they'd do three and four sets. And the biggest thing you could name in the business, and Mark was one of those with his I live down the street, and I've passed by this place dozens of times, and always wanted to come in, and my roommate and I were in a phase where we wanted to go to different places that we'd never been before, and uh, just try out new places, and it was a day after uh, Sam Sewell abandoned mud racing out in somewhere, I don't know where we were. We came back, and we decided to come here for the first time, and uh, walked in, and knew we'd come home. It's fabulous. 
they, they made me a judge. And I judged all these girls. And I picked that one. That's me. And the orange. Girl. So they line up all the contestants. They do so. And then the judges ask the contestants questions. Okay? So we asked this girl, uh, I would say, well, who's your favorite singer? And she'd say, uh, Mick Jagger. <laughs> and then we'd ask this girl, who's your favorite singer? And she'd say, maybe uh, somebody from Creedence Clearwater. All along, I come to this girl. I says, who's your favorite singer? She says, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> At that time, she was extremely, uh, how old were we there? 16 or 17. Yeah, about 16 she was. Yeah. I said, Frank Sinatra, that's funny, because kids usually didn't like him. So that mm -hmm. that made her stand out a little bit because she didn't go for any of that. So. The orange bikini made stand out too. Well, orange. <laughs> well, that, that always helped out. That know. helped a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> and that one was too fat. And <laughs> All right. Okay, no point in the yeah, Just like the, was the, the girls going today, the, uh, oh, the Dixie Chicks, the fat one. You know? Okay, anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that was it. She was quite interesting at that time because she she knew more about a lot more about music than these other people. These other girls didn't. They were sort of uh, airheads. What?